Great. Uh, welcome everyone to the next session that we're going to have. We're going to be talking more about customers. And now we're going to have a session about CS interactions. Well, your interactions between us and you. And today with us, with you, we have myself, Cello, as they call me in ICB, or Tsenolo Mokwezi, if you want to pronounce my name in my language. I am the head of customer support, and I, well, my adrenaline activity or the go-to adrenaline activity is skydiving. And that's my Instagram handle for anybody who wants to interact with me outside the conference space. Okay, hello everyone. This is Nairuz, or as they call me in ICB, Nay. Uh, I am the Middle East and Africa Regional Responsible for Customer Support. And when Cello asked me actually to choose an adrenaline activity, I just couldn't find any. So I just wrote 101. I'm literally a grandma at heart. So that shows how opposites we are. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I am your co fasi for this session. Cool. So for session alignments and no Gwen, I don't casually skydive over the weekend. For the session alignments, uh, this is not a heavy session, but we would also like you to pay a lot of attention. Um, have somewhere to write questions uh, for the Q&A that we're going to have at the end, but you can feel free to write any questions in the chat as well during the session. And last but not least, we know that you've been you've been on a break and you've had another session before this, heavy sessions before this, but take a breath, relax, and be mindful and be one with us. Okay, so for the session outline, first we're going to be talking about your relationship with ICD customer support, aka us. Uh, second, we will be talking about the evolution of CS systems. Third, how does the system work? And last but not least, a call to action. And the first section of this session is obviously your relationship with ICB customer support. Um, I'm gonna be asking you guys a question, which is how often do you approach CS for consultancies or uh, requests? And I believe that, yeah, you have a poll, so. Tell us, how often do you approach CS? I'm gonna end the poll in one, two, and three. Okay, let me share the results. So, um, 31% of you proactively, unconditionally approach CS for consultancies and requests. We love you. And 31% also of you occasionally, only when needed, approach CS. And 38% of you have never approached CS so far, which is a shame if you ask me, but let's change that. Um, gonna stop sharing the results. And yeah, second question is, Customer support exists only to solve cases. Do we only exist to solve cases? It's a true or false question. Let me see. Oh, we do bring sunshine. Thank you, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> okay no 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 yeah true we don't only exist to solve cases we exist for multiple other reasons actually which we will tell you about later on third and i believe last question is apart from consultancies on ongoing cases what else can you approach customer support for What can you approach customer support for apart from consultancies? 
general APIP understanding, approval and realization breaks, APIP, yes, you are, <laughs> breaks. Uh -huh. Information before a car opens. Yeah, we do provide that type of information, true. <laughs> a case <laughs> opens, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, we, we exist for many reasons and yeah. Don't, do not hesitate to approach us. We love you and we want you to love us too. That's it for me. Cool. Uh, so if you've noticed, we've been asking a lot about interaction between ICBCS and the rest of the ECB network. And we're going to talk a bit more about the evolution of our processes in the way that we interact with each other. And beginning with this, Next name. Beginning with this, we decided to do a why, what, how of um, the evolution of these particular processes. And we will start talking about the why behind the change of our processes. But for you to understand what this is about, um, for those who may not know, those who have not approached ICB before, we used to have uh, what we call templates. So we would prepare templates in PDF format. And then what you would have to do is that you would have to copy what the template is saying or follow what the template is saying and try to structure or write an email for us to be able to understand what you want from us. But at a certain point, we realized because of the reasons that I will mention to, uh, mention to you now, we realized that maybe it would be better for us to change and do something else and make things easier for you to be able to approach us and for us to be able to solve uh, your issues. So the first reason why we decided to make that change is that we were getting incomplete information. And as much as we had these templates for you to follow and we had these guidelines for you to follow, we were still getting incorrect information. And that meant that every time people kept on sending requests, we needed to like ask additional questions or for example, somebody sends a consultancy and the consultancy is not clear, or it does not include all the information that it's supposed to include, or generally uh, leaving out things that should have been there in the beginning. The second reason is that people were not following the templates. So these templates were available on the ICB website. These are templates that we shared a lot and we don't know if like they got lost somewhere in people's drives or what was happening, but uh, we realized that a lot of people who are approaching us were not following the templates. And if we have templates and guidelines and people are not following the templates and guidelines, clearly we need to find a way to ensure that people start to follow the templates and guidelines. And then the third reason why we decided to change was that it took us longer to solve your issues. So obviously, if you're going to be sending us requests or you're going to be asking us for things and this information is either unclear or you haven't followed the template, it means we're going to send you back to get this information that we needed from you. And all this could have been solved actually if you had just uh, followed the template as you were supposed to, or if you actually included all the information that you were supposed to include from the start. The fourth reason is that people kept losing the guidelines, which is uh, connected to people not following the templates, because we did have uh, instances where like people would keep on sending us messages like, where can I find uh, the guidelines for this? Where can I find the template for this? And so on. And which was kind of weird because these things were available on the ICB website. So we were even wondering if people actually did go to the website or not, but that's a story for another day. The other reason that we had was that, which is the final one, uh, we are always looking for ways to make things better and easier for you. So it is not only about you not following the templates and the guidelines or you not following specific instructions, but it is also because we strive or we aim to make things easier for you and to deal with things quicker in, in such a way that you will be able to provide even more value to your networks in your respective entities. 
Then moving on to the what, because I've been talking a lot about uh, uh, the, the existing system that we had of, of the guidelines and so on and so forth and giving you reasons why, but some of you are probably not understanding what exactly it is that I'm talking about or what this change is about. We decided that maybe it would be better for us to create a customer support portal. And this customer support portal has two, fun two main functions. It has the main function of you to submit a request. We will talk more about the specific requests that you can make on this portal. And it was also it is also a place for you to be able to check uh, existing requests or requests you've probably had whether two years ago, three years ago for whatever reason or to check ones that are most recent. The how, is that, well, first we needed to create the portal itself, which is basically the process that we went through before launching it. And now we are going through the implementation phase, which is phasing out sending requests by emails completely. This is not because we do not love you sending us emails and we're not trying to make things even more difficult for you. We are just trying to make things easier for both us and you at the same time. And to solve a doubt or a confusion that some of you were having, after you send this request through a form, uh, we then send you a response that appears in your email and you continue the conversation from there. So it's not like you're going to send us a form and you will be cut out from communication with ICB entirely or that you will still not be able to use your email to continue conversating with us. So that is what we are currently doing now. And then next. Um, so this is just to explain the phases that somebody used to, that some that you would have had to go through before, which is number one, checking the guidelines. Because if you don't know how to send a request, the first thing that you would need to do is look for these guidelines, whether it's on the ICB website or coming to us to ask for them. And then you would have to send this email following these particular guidelines. Then you have to wait for a response from us. And then in the event that you haven't followed the guidelines or actually provided enough information, you would have to then take time to provide this extra information. And then only after that entire process, your issue would then be solved. But uh, what we have now is that we have well, by introducing this system, what we are trying to do is we are trying to eliminate the back and forth between us having to ask for even more information, which is why, click me, which is why in this particular case, you do not have to check the guidelines before and then send an email that is completely like ruled out in terms of the first steps that you have to take because now you would only have to go to the customer support portal and fill a form, which we'll, we will explain to you in greater detail and Nehru's will even show you how to navigate through the system. And as you can see, one of the steps that do not exist here is that you wouldn't have to, you know, if you follow the right steps in the form, you wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have to ask you for additional information and so on. So this is what we meant by making the process easier for you and for us, because then we have a clear understanding of who needs to do what, who needs to provide what, and when you need to provide it. Next. So the main benefits of this system, uh, the three main things that you can take away from this, and it is that we are able now to solve your issues or your consultancies or your tickets or any request quicker than we were before by using the forms. And we can provide you now with a more personalized support because the questions in the forms are made in a way, in such in a way that you are, you are, required, you are required to explain in detail what is going on. You are requested to give us a specific question as to what you want from us so that we can explain it. So that helps us give you a more personalized response. And then further on, we have centralized guidelines. We do not have guidelines anymore in PDF format, but the forms themselves act as a guideline. And this is something you will see when Nehru's is presenting or showing you how to navigate through the system, because where 
uh, there is need for explanation uh, for you to understand better what you need to provide to us. There are hints at the bottom. So it makes it easier for you to understand what exactly you need to provide. And everything is there for each and every form. So you wouldn't need to go back and look for other things that are external. And then the link that we have here, which is ice.ec slash customer support is the customer support portal that we have, which we launched uh, a month ago in the ECB chairs call. And now we are sharing it with the entire network here. And then we had a question for you asking you the things or the different things that you can come to us for or approach us for. And this involves consultancies. Consultancies can be in different forms. You can come to us for consultancies either for ongoing cases. You can come to us for consultancies whether you have APIP doubts or any other general consultancy because sometimes we get consultancies that are not really linked to any APIP clause or doubt and they are also not related to a case that is ongoing. And the reason why we decided to emphasize this is that a lot of you, and especially those who probably said that they don't approach CS at all, is that the reasons for not approaching us usually are, oh, but I don't have cases, or oh, but we don't have that many exchanges, so we don't have breaks. But you, are, as an ECB chair or as an ECB responsible pro to, for providing a specific education to your entity, and you should be knowledgeable in all these things, whether it is related to areas in BD, areas in audit, or areas in customer support or customer, pro customer processes. And this is where we come in to help. And another thing is that we don't know if you are well versed or if you're knowledgeable in this. We don't know if you're not coming to us because you know everything and everything is super clear. We don't know if you're in the dark and you actually do need support from us. So you coming to us would solve your issues and it would help us provide more value to you. Apart from that, we have break requests. Uh, this can either be in the form of a break realization, a break finished, or an extraordinary break approved. So an extraordinary break approval is where uh, one, the complaining entity wants to make a break, but they haven't received any responses from the respondent entity, and they want ICB to intervene and perform this break on their behalf because under normal circumstances, approval breaks are supposed to be done at entity level by the ECB responsible. Um, we do have finished realization early requests. We have extensions of finished dates. And something I probably forgot to mention that is related to breaks is that in extreme or extraordinary circumstances, we do perform break completes. Um, and these are complete, these are breaks that have to have the approval of the ICB chair. So this is not something that you would request to us and we would perform immediately. We would uh, CC the ICB chair and the ICB chair would give us a go ahead on whether we should uh, proceed or not. Because I mean, it's a break complete. Um, you really have to have a very valid reason or a very great reason for wanting to break somebody's complete experience. Then the last three ones, which is the official case application, the official case appeal, and the harassment case are other things that you can request from us. All these three are things that you will find in greater detail in the annexes of the APIP. So each of them have a specific annex that you can go into to see the templates for sending these things and so on and so forth. But the official case application and the official case appeal are mainly for ECBs. So it's the responsibility of ECBs to understand these annexes, to understand the templates or what needs to be, what information needs to be provided to ICB in order for us to solve these issues. And in what cases you can actually come to us and submit these requests, uh, i.e. the official case application and appeal. We have a form uh, which Ney will also show you for harassment cases. And this is a form that you can, that anybody can submit. It can either be submitted by an EP, uh, MC or ECB or anybody, any stake, any ISACA or any stakeholder that we have. 
but it is important for you to understand that this is something that is not directly handled by us, but it can be uh, requested through the portal. Uh, for those of you who were in Karina's session before the session about harassment, she did mention that in the ICB, she is the sole person responsible for harassment cases. So even though we have this form in our portal, it does not mean that it is going to be solved by us. All the information will be dealt with by her, and then we will intervene by giving you any other updates where necessary. Cool. Okay, so now that Cello explained everything in detail, I'm going to show you everything in detail. Let me just go into the portal. So this is the first page that you will see when um, you go to, the, you type the link or you find the link. You can find um, the options of submitting a request or checking your existing requests. I'm gonna start with submitting a request first. So when you click here, you will find um, this. Basically you have to choose your issue or the type of request that you uh, want to submit to ICB. And it's it could be a break request, extension of finish date, finish realization earlier, consultancy, official case application or appeal, a complaint or a harassment incident report. Let's start with the break request. So when you click on the break request, you will find your email address, subject. So basically you will find uh, various uh, ticket fields and you have to uh, fill all of these before you submit the ticket. Here uh, in the type of the break, you will have to specify which break you are requesting to ICB. So for example, you are requesting uh, an extraordinary approval break. You have to click that and so on and so forth. You have to choose the request your complainer entity uh, region and request your complainer entity type. So a sending entity or a hosting entity. Um, as well as for the respondent entity type and name and region. For an extension of finish date, you have to basically just click on extension of finish date and you have to fill all of these just like you have to do if you were to uh, submit a break approval or a break request. Um, original finish date, new desired finish date. And obviously here you can find little notes that can help you. Uh, through your navigation in the portal. For example, here it says that make sure that the whole exchange period will uh, still be less than 78 weeks for GTA and GTE and less than eight weeks for GV opportunities or the request will be denied. So you will be finding these type of tips or reminders for you uh, underneath specific um, ticket fields. And uh, you can here like submit attachments. Okay, so if you go to finish realization earlier, it's pretty much the same. Just you have to um, mention the new desired finish date and so on, the region, the entity type, the entity uh, name, sending LC, hosting LC, and reason for finishing realization earlier. And for consultancy, okay, you have to basically um, choose the consultancy type, right? So if it's an ongoing case, you click ongoing case and according to which type of consultancy you are going to choose, you will get um, specific detailed um, information or ticket fields that you have to fill in order for us to provide you with a customized, um, customized uh, response. So here for ongoing case, you have to fill the OPID OP name on expa, enabler name, EP ID, and so on and so forth. And if you want to uh, attach proof, you just have to attach the Google link drive of the proof if needed. And here you can uh, ask us the doubt question and to present the specific questions of the doubt you have regarding the consultancy. Each question has to be on a specific topic in a specific line. And here you can basically drop the attachments. It's optional just like in any other um, form. No, let me actually go with APIP or AEPP. So here, if you choose that your consultancy is 
an APIP or an AP, APP question, you can here uh, choose or specify if it's an APIP or APP. Um, you can here write the clause with the clause number. So you specify which clause is, um, is not clear to you or your doubt clause basically. And here your doubt question, same thing. And then you click on submit and we will get everything. Um, for other, you can actually like um, submit a consultancy type of other. And here you just have to um, ask or write the doubt question and we will get it, of course. Um, official case of application or OCA. So here you have to write your email address, the subject description. In the description we mean, please introduce yourself and the context of your request briefly. If your request is a consultancy, please include the case in solid points with a timeline of events. And you have to specify the requester complainer entity, requester complainer region, requester complainer entity type, whether it's a sending or a hosting entity, and respondent entity name, respondent region, respondent entity type. And here you have to check these boxes. First box is LC to LC level was correctly followed and no solution was agreed on. So you basically need to check this box if that phase um, happened according to the CSF. And here ECB to ECB level was correctly followed and no solution was agreed on. So basically you have to check these two boxes, which means that you can now uh, escalate the problem to ICB. You actually also have to drop a drive link of one PDF where ICB can find that mutually acceptable solution could not be found or no response was given from one side to the other respecting the case solving flow. So here you have to submit the proof that, um, that the case re uh, respected the CSF and went from uh, the LC to LC level to the ECB to ECB level and now it's an OCA. And here you have to submit um, the link to a drive folder containing the official case application template filled according to the annex number five of APIP. So you still have to get the template from the annex and you have to submit it here. Um, this being a form does not mean that the template will not be followed or anything. You still have to uh, fill the template and uh, link it here. Uh, note that you will have to upload below in the attachment field by the end of this page the folder of the proofs supporting your claims. So here you have to drop the proof and here you have to drop the OCA application, the OCA template. Um, application package proof should be all uh, in one zip. Th these are details that you can find in the annex. Each claim has to be into a separate folder labeled with the violation it will be providing as fact. Documents inside the folders must be organized and named according to the order and or violation they are providing. So I think here it's pretty self-explanatory here. You just have to insert the link of the OCA template and here it's the proof. Yeah. Let's go to um, official case appeal form. And here it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, you just have to mention the original OCA ticket number and um, tick these boxes was a leave of appeal sent after 48 hours maximum of the official case solution, meaning if no leave of appeal within 48 hours of release of the official case uh, solution was sent to ICB, then this request is invalid. Following the clause number na, 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 from ABIP, basically these are tips and reminders for you to um, keep on mind when you are submitting an official case uh, appeal. And you also have to check this box, which is appeal validity. By checking this box, you acknowledge that you went carefully through, through the clause from APIP, check the validity of your appeal request and all conditions are met. Now you can upload below the official appeal package. Please make sure you read carefully the official official case appeal annex of APIP. So here you have to submit a link to a drive folder containing the official case appeal template filled according to the annex number nine of the APIP. So we still have to follow the template of the annex and note that you have to upload below in the attachment field here, um, the additional proof or the additional findings um, that can support your um, appeal request. Moving on, on to a complaint. 
basically here you have to, if you are, if you want to submit a complaint to ICB, you have to fill these email address, subject, description, and here customer type. So if you are an exchange participant, for example, you will have to um, fill these. Basically exchange participant, full name, you're sending local committee, your sending entity, your hosting local committee, your hosting entity, your current status. And here uh, we try to um, basically explain the, the phases of the customer flow to the EPs because not all of them know what is an open status or an approved status, I mean, probably. So for example, here we have, I have not applied to my exchange, meaning it's an open EP. The status is open. I have already applied to my exchange, applied. I have already applied to my exchange and got accepted and so on and so forth. We have rejected, approved, realized and finished or completed. Here they have the reason of why they are contacting AC, uh, ICB, sorry. And there are many reasons here that they can choose from. Yeah. And then they can also choose the reported violation and here they can um, actually like click on many reported violations, so to each their own. And obviously, as you can see, there are many reported violations and yeah, they can also choose other if the violation that they are reporting is not uh, included in the list. And they can also uh, submit a complaint description. And here they have to uh, describe the details of their complaint with a clear timeline of events also make sure to highlight the major events and if you have or if they have more than one violation to report, please describe each apart. You will have to attach a proof for every claim below or your complaint will be dismissed. So obviously uh, proofs are always important for us to consider um, anything, a case or a complaint. No, actually, let me, um, let me go with customer type, OP. Uh, enabler. So here, complaint description, company name, partner local committee, partner entity, uh, partner status, why are they contacting ICB and reported violation. And here, partner status is, I was only contacted by ISEC, um, but didn't sign a contract yet. Here are the different uh, statuses that the partner can, uh, can have. Now that we are done with the forms um, request, let me show you the how can you check basically an existing request if you have submitted a request. And like Cello has mentioned um, previously, when you submit a request, you can check the status of the request here in the portal. But when we answer, it's going to be sent to you via email and you will be talking to us or reaching out to us via email. So uh, it's not like you will submit a request and track the request here through the through the portal. And that's it. You cannot add anything or you cannot, you know, reply to anything. So basically you have to sign in with your um, ISAC network um, credentials for the portal. And here you can find the different requests that you have submitted. And it's very cool here to see that you can uh, sort the statuses by, um, by by filter, you can filter the statuses. So there's open, awaiting your reply or solved. And here Cello's uh, requests are also, thank God. You can also search through the requests. And it's so cool here that, for example, you can um, even sort through or see, check the requests you've made six years ago. So any request you've made to ICB or any request that you were CC'd on to ICB, to our email, you can find when you go through um, here. Basically, you have to, um, you have to check your uh, requests. So as you can see, the ID, of the ID of the ticket, the subject, and when was it created, last activity, and status. And that's it. Cool. Uh, so we hope that it was uh, easy for everybody to follow and uh, at least have a clear understanding of what they can find on the portal itself. Um, but we did show the link. We'll, we will show it again in the call to action just for you to be able to go there and see what's going on. But as we've mentioned already when, when I was explaining in the second section, we are trying to phase out the requests that are being sent by email. 
So if you're an ECB or if you're an ECB chair and you would like to contact us, please try as much as possible for you to go to the customer support portal. Oops. So for the call to action, we have one which is using the customer support portal for all requests mentioned in previous slides. And this is something that I've been talking about now. And remember to approach us for any other consultancy that isn't related to an ongoing case, which can either be an API picked out or other consultancies that were mentioned uh, here during this presentation. And then all guidelines in each, uh, in each form. So don't worry about getting lost. So as Ne was presenting, you saw that there were little notes under um, specific fields to guide you and help you understand what you need to fill, why you need to fill it, and even references from some of the APIP clauses as well. And even the processes that you need to go through before you actually submit a request to us. For example, um, an official case application where she did show the checkboxes to show whether you have gone through the LC to LC stage and ECB to ECB stage. So these are things that will guide you in order for you to understand if it is the right time for you to be coming to us for an official case application or not. So it is quite more detailed and it provides more guidance than the templates or the previous guidelines actually did. So we do hope that nobody gets lost. And then finally, we uh, read the guidelines on the form. So if you have read the guidelines on the forms, but you're still lost, you can approach your customer support regional responsible, whether the, you are from Americas or MIA or Europe or Asia Pacific, the contact details of all uh, ICB members are there in the global contact list and there you will find the relevant contacts for your regional responsibles. Or if you're an ECB chair, you can just ask in the group that we have in Telegram, who is the responsible for Europe and so on, and they will respond to you appropriately. And again, here is the link to the customer support portal, ice.ec slash customer support. Um, we hope that this indeed will bear the benefits of, to, will bear the benefits of fruits that we wanted to have. And we hope that there will be less confusions in future when it comes to interacting um, be, with ICB, customer support specifically. So that is it on the call to actions. But if you have any questions, um, this is your time to shine. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, you can either write those in the chat or you can open your mic and speak. It's up to you. Yes, Adim has a question. Um, hello, Shello. Um, nice session. Amazing, amazing session. It was really informative. I have a question related to uh, two of the things that you mentioned, um, realization breaks and finish before realization. So when I was going through the APIP, I saw that they had the same conditions to meet. However, when you talk about finish before realization, there was like a certain time limit. So for, G, for short term experiences, it was nine weeks and so on and so forth for each product. So could you explain the difference between finish before realization and realization break? If I understood well, uh, finish before realization, you mean finish early? Yeah. Finish realization early. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Finish realization early. Okay. So the main reason why um, this status or this thing was added into the APIP was that we realized that like the, we got a lot of break realization requests from exchange participants who were probably close to finishing the experience or the, uh, the reason for the break was something beyond the control or something like this. And this is an opportunity to give them so that they can finish the experience. There are specific guidelines in the APIP, like you have mentioned, or in terms of when can we apply for a finished realization early. It really depends on each and every case. And if you have a specific case that you have with an EP and you need answers from us about it, then we kindly request you to send this through the customer support portal and we'll be able to give you that, um, that answer. 
And then a break realization um, basically is follows the same guidelines that it has followed before. One of the things that I will note that is in the fill, uh, finish realization early is that there should be no violation whatsoever of the APIP. So that is one of the main conditions that you need to meet in order for you to request for this particular status change on Expo. Okay, thank you so much. That answers my question. You're welcome. Does anybody else have another question? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> okay, do I have a question? Do we have any? Ah, okay, here's a question from Fatima. If an EP ends finish uh, earlier and applies the finish remote realization earlier, does the EP receive like a consultancy, like a constancy as a normal finished because no violations occurred? Okay. So uh, there are two things here. There is finish realization earlier, which has its own uh, clauses in the APIP. And then we have finished remote uh, realization earlier, which also has its own conditions in the APIP itself. So if your, your situation or the EP meets that particular criteria, and also at the same time, there were no violations before, then yes, that would apply. But you need to look at the specific criteria that is needed for either any of these two in the APIP. The remote realization one is something that is not done by ICB directly, but something that the ECBs can do on their own. But the one that needs to come to us is the one for finished realization earlier. Um, Fatima, I don't know if I answered your question. Yes. Cool. Uh, questions, comments? While you're still thinking of a question to ask, um, are there any ECB directors or team leaders for customer support here? In the call, in the chat. I will take it as a no. ECB chairs? Cool. We have ECB chairs in the house as well. So uh, main takeaway before I take another question from Adim, please make sure that you go through the customer support portal. Make sure that if you are not the one who deals with, um, who requests for consultancies directly as an ECB chair, that you educate your ECB members who might not be here on how to interact with us and how to use this customer support portal and so on, so that they also have an understanding because we do know that there are some entities that have customer support teams and there are specific people in there who deal with cases and they are the ones who actually come to us with the questions as opposed to the ECB chair. So please do make sure that you downscale this information, especially if they are not here in the call with you. Adim. Your second um, question. Yes. Um, my second question is, what would customer support recommend that ECBs um, from different entities use to track um, information? So what? how can we improve our information management when it comes to um, uh, how many approvals have been requested, uh, how many approval breaks have been requested, how many cases have been forwarded, and all of that information that relates to customer support, basically. That's a great question. Okay, so I, I will tell you from the experience of other ECBs and what other ECBs are doing because there are multiple platforms that you can use in order for you to be able to check this. The most basic thing that um, that is used by other ECBs that are not mature or have uh, different systems to track all these things is that they just have a tool. 
So they have a tool where they are tracking all these things. So every time they get a request, uh, because approval breaks and so on are things that need to come through you as an ECB chair and these are as an ECB team. So these are things that you would be notified of via email. And every time you get these requests or you are handling these requests, then you will just take that information and include it in the tool that you have. Even though we, as ICB, have uh, a platform that we use, which is Zendesk, we do input information in a specific tool in what we call our CS Master Tracker. And this is so that we have a backup of information because the platform that we are using is not our own platform. It's a, plat it's a different platform. So you never know what can happen. So it's always best for you to have that information. So that's something else that you can do. Other entities, because maybe the MC or the entity in general uses Podio. Podio is another thing that they use for either um, accepting requests and also tracking them. So I know that the other ECB teams that use Podio forms. Um, so they are, it's similar to what we have here. The only difference here is that we're using different platforms, but they also use forms for requests. And this information is automatically registered in the platform itself. And it makes it easier for them to analyze and keep track of this data. There are other, um, well, not others, but there is another entity such as Egypt, for example, that uses a platform similar to ours. Um, they use Freshdesk. Yes, ECB Egypt uses Freshdesk. So this is something that they use and they're able to track the data in a nice way because it's like it keeps all the data in there and they're able to manipulate the analysis and the data to get what they want so those are the different things that you can do so it always depends on the maturity of your entity and how far you're willing to go in terms of tracking this accurate um, data but there are many options that you can look into including the ones that i've given now thank you shallow thank you so much you're welcome. Cool. Um, okay, we have a question from Redina. I hope I, meant, I, I said it right. Uh, thank you for the session. My question is how to assign EPs in short. Ooh, okay. So questions directly related to EXPA, questions that I cannot answer um, <laughs> at this moment because that's not our area of expertise. But if we have any ECB chairs or ECB team members who know how to do this, then please feel free to answer uh, Radina or even mention it in the delegates group or whatever the case is. But we would recommend you to contact expert support. And actually, we had uh, Pradyum, who is the CEDA in AI who deals with like expa and supporting people in terms of expa. We had a keynote from him yesterday and he's the one that you would most likely contact for you to get this um, information. Yeah, you can watch the recording on YouTube. Thank you, um, Riot. You can watch the, the recording on YouTube that he had because he was explaining all these things that are related to expa and how to navigate through the system itself. Great, and then we have a thank you from Dhruv. You're most welcome. Uh, Fatima, if if it is the information, just the MC has the option to put the health info on EXPA. Okay, again, anything related to EXPA, please uh, either watch the recording as Riot has suggested or contact EXPA support directly because this goes beyond the scope of our expertise. So unfortunately, I'm not able to answer you on specific questions that are related. Ah, she was responding to uh, Radina. Thank you for that, Fati. Thank you for being a proactive ECB chair who's always ready to help the network. Amazing. So if there aren't any questions, um, the next session that we're going to have is unleashing your customer support. And this session is going to be in two places. So there are different tracks. So we received an email yesterday um, concerning this. And you also got a reminder in the opening. And this is the third reminder that we are giving. 
if you have not checked where your entity is supposed to be in terms of whether it's supposed to go to the frequentress track or the beginners track, please use this link ice.ec slash um, unleash CS in order for you to see which session your entity is supposed to go into. That session, those sessions will be facilitated. Well, the main facies for those sessions will be myself and Neruz. So you'll be seeing us again. We hope that you're not tired of our faces and hearing our voices because we're going to be together for another hour. Um, so that's the alignment that we have for you in terms of this. And I guess we can give each other a break of eight minutes before we start the next session. So over to OC if anybody from the OC team is here. We are here always to get you back. Cool, so we are done. Um, if there are any other questions in future, please contact us. Uh, our contacts, as we said, are then the global contact list. So if you still have additional questions that you might have had, or you now feel motivated to come to us for requests on the customer support portal, we are always happy to help. And we will be waiting for you there in the portal. Thank you guys.